I want to start um, by saying, we're kind of really talking about what we think of as sculpture, and I think it's probably maybe similar to, to how the, the YSI see sculpture. So we kind of understand it in an uh, in expanded or elastic sense that encompasses both traditional materials and kind of more contemporary techniques. And to us, sculpture is essentially about kind of a, a sensibility, uh, a sense or a, a sensuous knowledge. And in 2013, one of our very first events was a panel discussion entitled True or False, There's No Such Thing as Sculpture, in which we attempted to unpick what sculpture is or isn't today. And in this, Ossian Ward, who um, had just left the time out as arts editor and moved to listen as their head of content, described the idea of sculpture as a frisson um, between man and something, stuff, matter, space, and sculpture as a condition the sculptural condition, um, a literacy of sorts. And these are kind of two ideas that very much align with our own thinking and that we've kind of taken on and now as part of our own definition of sculpture. So Pangea Sculptures Centre, or PSC as we're also happy to be known, um, is an initiative started in London in 2013, uh, but now we're working uh, across the country and into Europe, notably in Spain, where we run a, a, an artist residency programme. And we support, nurture and develop artists working with sculpture through uh, a range of things, mentoring, fabrication, education, commissioning opportunities and public exhibitions and events. And I'll show you a few examples in a moment. Uh, and we focus our efforts really on those in the first seven years after graduation or, or of professional practice. Uh, as there's a lot of research showing this group is still very much reliant on a network of peers and support to sustain their ability to survive in the arts. Um, but we do also have clients and collaborators that are much more established artists, architects, galleries, designers, theatres, universities and so on. Um, so sculpture in particular as a contemporary art form, um, through its very grounding in matter and space, is built on a web of interdependencies and it's hard to produce sculpture in isolation. Producing sculpture requires the artist to relate not only to the evolving objects, but to people. Matter must be researched, sourced, traded, moved and constructed. And being a successful artist in this field equally involves good communication and negotiation skills, project management and brief writing, or pitching, as it does technical workshop skills and creative flair. Rather than working independently from the system, it relies heavily on a system of networks and exchanges and is an innately social process. Um, it's an ecology, um, and the health of this ecology is what interests PSC and what we aim to support. As an organism within this ecology, we are also well aware that we are equally reliant on and benefit from its ongoing survival and success. Um, and I use this description as I think it helps to explain our approach to the evolution of our own organisation and how we engage, which is an approach that is both proactive and reactive to the changing environment. We're a non-profit community interest company and we have no fixed agenda other than to benefit fine art practitioners whose work, research and interests involve sculpture and three-dimensional form making and the wider arts community and wider public interested in this art form. In 2015, for example, we were talking about having a large fixed workshop facility in London. Now we talk more about having a small London base and a number of outposts dotted around the country, uh, each with a specialist focus. And this perhaps better reflects the changing contemporary art landscape, with more people preferring to toggle in and out of London, but live elsewhere, rather than be based there permanently, if they want to be there at all. And we also talk about even more flexible ways to support artists, how we can be the ones to move, either by working with partners throughout the country and running programmes in their centres, or by finding fabrication work for artists they can undertake in their own workshops and studios, and our fabricators are also dotted around the country. Um, and by providing resources available to access online, such as freely available digital publications, um, we've got a substantial interview series with a range of art world professionals from commercial art fabricators, who preferred not to be named at the time, to artists like Gavin Turk and Harry Mirza, to commissioners and so on, who speak um, quite candidly about the realities of life in the art world from their particular experiences and perspectives. Um, and maybe this is a good moment to mention that we often talk about this idea of um, making the making visible. 
and we try to produce content based around this idea. So content that reveals something of the invisible labour that goes into the making um, of this cultural ecology. And we're interested in transparency as well and, and making the art world more equitable and inclusive. Um, and as making sculpture is the reason why most of us uh, practitioners got into making art uh, in the first place. I am a, a sculptor as well, uh, as a sculpture organiser. <laughs> uh, it also makes sense to, to us that revealing something of this making process is also a way to engage with different audiences. Not everyone can kind of walk into a gallery context and feel confident and know how to engage with a finished artwork in front of you. Others, other, others can have a richer experience or richer conversation when it's seen in the workshop, as Sim Simeon was kind of talking about earlier, you know, when it's kind of seen half made. Um, and and we, we try and kind of think about ways that we can kind of reveal some of that, that kind of making um, to, to the wider public. So our fabrication and technical service is, is one way we offer access to technical skills and expertise. And simply put, we offer technical support to artists and others that allow them to continue to, to develop and expand their practice through acquiring new skilled processes and the learning of new techniques. We're very happy to work with kind of younger, more emerging artists on kind of smaller projects um, with smaller budgets. Um, our service is flexible to meet the needs of a particular project and circumstance and we're more than happy to discuss any project and, and to kind of help you find a way to make it happen. Um, and so we, we, kind of we can arrange for technicians to kind of come and, and teach you in your studio or work on a piece with you in your studio or equally, um, you know, you can kind of go and work with, with them in theirs. We also offer very kind of straightforward, um, you know, full and, and partial fabrication of artworks um, from producing te your technical drawings, doing digital or traditional modelling, body casting, metal fabrication and, and so on. And by way of demonstrating the, the web of interdependencies I, I referred to earlier, this service is one of the core ways we can not only help support long-term sustainable art practice, but also ensure the long-term health of an industry we believe has innovation through technical expertise at its core, whilst at the same time also ensuring our own financial sta stability. Um, so, for those that don't know, a non-profit community interest company um, can under undertake profit-making activities and also apply for grants, but all proceeds must be reinvested into the business to support our community remit. Um, and our business approach is designed around a long-term self-sustaining business model um, and to be eventually unreliant on grant funding, but we're not quite there yet, unfortunately. Um, but essential to this model is, is the fabrication and technical provision. So profit from these services gets reinvested to support our cultural and educational programming, such as our Sculpture Production Award, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, and it also means we can offer some qualifying artists discount rates on these services to help them realise their projects, um, which effectively means that you know, if an architect or designer comes to us, they get our full commercial rate. And if an artist comes to us and they've got a smaller budget, we all look to kind of discount our rates to kind of make it happen. Because ultimately, we're only doing the work for the architects to be able to help the artists. Um, so, I mean, why this service is so key to us in terms of directly supporting artists to have long-term sustainable careers in the arts is this. Um, the approach we take to our fabrication service is unique in the industry. So we do it to create paid employment that utilises artists' technical skills and experience in a way that doesn't demand a full-time full -time commitment and recognises the need of artists to spend time on their own practice, as well as the money required to sustain it. And we also pay fairly and above many of the commercial fabrication companies. Um, and that's really important to us. So not only do we support artists to access skills through this provision, but it also utilises the existing skills and experience of other artists, providing them with paid employment that can then in turn go on to feed their main practice. And this system in turn gives us a commercial income, which feeds into our own non-for-profit activities and which we hope in time will enable us to be self-sustainable. So a few uh, examples of the kind of uh, uh, works that we do. Um, this is an example of a technical workshop that we ran. Um, and so another way we support ongoing skills development <coughs> is through running free workshops. Um, 
both sides now was an experimental two-day sculpture workshop using concrete to explore the architectural proposition as an approach to sculptural production. Drawing on the typology of domes and vaults, structures distinguished by their capacity to exploit forces of compression, 12 artists worked together to construct a section of a vault in concrete as a way of demonstrating an engineering principle and realising a sculptural potential. Neither maquette nor building, the specific proposition was something in between, ambiguous in scale, yet subject to real structural forces and constructed in real architectural materials. And all the artists, in essence, were there because they were new to concrete and they signed up to learn how to work with this particular material. We also run a number of artist residencies, and this is an image from our park residency in Spain this summer. Taking over the Ethnographic Museum of Val de Alba for a week this August, three invited artist residents brought pre-existing artworks, components and materials and collaborated with their new context and invited curator in residence and each other to reflexively remake their sculptures for this particular context and produce an exhibition at the same time. And in line with PSC's commitment to making the making visible, the exhibition's development was carried out in public with things being made, moved, constructed in public, um, with the building open, presenting an opportunity for the public to see how an exhibition evolves and is made. Another strand of what we do is consultancy and uh, partnering on public sculpture commissions to create new paid opportunities for artists to make sculpture, um, for artists within our network. And we're currently working uh, with the Birmingham Hippodrome on a new commission by Rachel Champion to be suspended in their four-storey stairwell as part of their 120th year birthday celebrations. Um, and this was an open call, so anyone could apply. Um, we work with the Hippodrome on the open call programme, uh, and we're now supporting the artists with the project's management, production and installation. And, and really, by Pangea taking on this role, uh, we can give the partner organisation more confidence to, to work with a kind of lesser established artist or someone with less experience working with public sculpture. Uh, and this new uh, commission is going to open uh, in October. Okay, so I'll just spend a bit more time um, case, t case studying our current, uh, currently running Sculpture Production Award 2019. Um, it says apply now, don't apply, it is closed. <laughs> <laughs> apply for the Sculpture Production Award 2020 and look out for that next spring. Um, I think it's a good example uh, of the kind of way we like to support artists around um, skills development. So the Sculpture Production Award, um, which is funded by Pangea from some of the profits made from our fabrication service, um, as well as the Arts Council, and it launched in the spring uh, and is a year-long programme, which we hope to repeat annually. Um, so yeah, it's open to artists working in 3D and based within the UK, but outside of London. And the award provides six sculptors with skills mentoring and a £1,000 production grant towards the realisation of a new work. And one of the six artists has also been invited to exhibit at the Coventry Biennial. Um, the award is aimed at emerging artists looking to explore the process of working with external fabricators. And we understand fabrication as more than just a way of farming out processes you don't have time to do or the skills to achieve. We understand it, um, as it was referenced earlier, really, you know, uh, as a tool like any other in your arsenal of making skills and how to integrate it into your practice in a way that works for you is something that takes time and attention to develop. What comes with this as well um, is things like knowing how to source good suppliers, project management, briefing, um, all kind of skills that are, are there to be kind of learnt and refined um, you're not kind of born with, born with them, kind of either. It's a it's a kind of they t you know they take time as the, as the guys referenced earlier really, um, and then a thousand pounds production grant. So I know that's not a lot, especially when uh, <laughs> talking about working with fabricators. I don't think it would get you very far with Pangolin, um, but the idea was that this would be a kind of small cash injection into an already planned for work, for an already planned show and that it would just enable the artist to take that work to the next level. Um, and then with the award also comes a level of promotion of each artist um, via PSC and the partner network to raise their profile. Um, 
So it was really important that this was uh, an open call, open for anyone outside of London to apply. Um, uh, and we um, work with a range of partner organisations around the country, including Yorkshire Sculpture Park, Castlefield Gallery, Eastside Projects, um, and many others, to ensure it reached well beyond our usual network. Um, and I'm pretty pleased to say we even got one application from the Isle of Skye, which I was uh, pretty chuffed about. Um, so we now have our six artists selected and we're currently in the production phase with each of them with the first of the exhibitions opening in October. Um, so Yelena Popover, a Nottingham-based artist, is probably one of the most established of, of all the artists, probably like on the emerged side of emerging rather than like the fresh out of uni side. Um, but she comes from tra traditionally uh, a painting-based practice. Um, and has only more recently started to integrate more sculptural concerns. Um, her paintings have spatial suggestions and she's exploring the connections between the 2D pattern and a 3D object for her upcoming show at the Holden Gallery in Manchester next February, or this February. So the new work is inspired by scholar's stones or gong sheaths, um, which are naturally occurring shaped rocks um, displayed on carved pedestals or trays traditionally appreciated by Chinese scholars. Um, she's travelling to a selection of British nuclear power plants to gather nuclear histories and stones from the coastline. Her found scholar stones will then be exhibited on specially designed and produced pedestals, each plinth to reflect the geological and industrial history of the different areas of the country from which the stones were sourced. With Birmingham-based artist Andrew Gillespie, we're working with him in a completely different way to explore 3D printing techniques on a uh, Colin the Caterpillar birthday cake. Uh, and he's interested in the relationship um, between object and image, the image and the copy. Um, and his show opens next month um, at Gallery Celine in uh, Glasgow. Um, Katrina Cowling will be our uh, first artist to exhibit um, and she was the artist that was also awarded the exhibition at Coventry Biennial. So the show at Coventry Biennial opens on the 4th of October. There's loads of information on our website if you want to go along to the private view, the party, it's all on there. Um, you just need to book tickets. Um, for Katrina, it was important that she was able to work directly alongside a specialist to learn how to work with fibreglass herself so that she could not only have um, the help to realise the new piece, uh, but also to take the skills back into her practice more broadly. Um, she wished to expand on the formal and conceptual concerns of previous work propelling her shiny vehicle, which is this work here, um, by specifically focusing on improving the production value of the panels that she int integrates into her installations. And these panels were previously produced in a more DIY way. So she was kind of melting plastic with a heat gun in her studio and then like, um, you know, spray painting it. Um, you can't really kind of make them out in this image, but you'll, um, you'll see one of the panels here um, on the left in another piece of hers called uh, Rough Cast. And these panels reference the poetics of the automobile as an emblem. Um, as emblematic of modern life and late capitalism. Um, so we matched her up with one of our Bristol-based fabricators, Luke, who um, it turns out he learnt his trade at, at Pangolin, um, who's particularly happy to work directly alongside the artist in more of an informal teaching role, as well as to produce the work with them. Um, and, you know, super, super skilled, great guy, <laughs> that I can say. Um, and so, yeah, if you are able to make it, um, the work will open at the Herbert Art Gallery and Museum in Coventry um, on the 4th of October, so uh, do come along. Um, we're also supporting um, Susie Osborne to work with a metal worker to design a modular steel structure which both supports her patterned ceramic works and also becomes an integral part of the sculpture itself. Uh, Liam Fallon, a Manchester-based artist, um, to further a young relationship um, he's got with a production facility in Manchester um, to produce a new work called Courtship, um, which is modelled on a 12th century catapult called the Trebuchet and a basketball court. Uh, removing the person from an encounter and replacing it with an object, he's asking the question, how can a moment of interaction be reduced to a metaphor? 
Um, and Emily Stollery, uh, who currently has some work on display um, as part of Bloomberg New Contemporaries. Um, um, with her, uh, we're brokering an artist residency um, at one of our bronze foundry partners. Um, and she's keen to understand more about the process of bronze casting and to integrate it into her practice. Um, specifically, the work she would like to make stems from her recent concrete sculptures, and particularly her work creating knotted forms that challenge our preconceptions of concrete as a material. She's interested in the formal play between materiality and perception of it, with soft seeming forms made from hard materials, strong forms that are precariously fragile, and so on. But the process is completely new to her, and so her knowledge of exactly what is achievable and how to integrate this material successfully with her formal concerns remains unknown. Um, and it's with this in mind that after initial conversations, we felt that this wasn't a straightforward fabrication project for someone, but rather that she needed time to get to know the process, experiment, and then decide what work would, be man would manifest, which is why this has kind of morphed into more of a, a kind of foundry residence, uh, residency. Uh, Emily's probably one of our uh, more emerging artists. Um, and uh, as, as through the kind of mentoring process and on com as conversations have developed, um, she's also kind of let me know that she's interested in applying to the Arts Council um, for a project grant for the first time. So one other way that we can also offer to mentor her is kind of in that process and provide feedback um, on that application. Uh, and so to quickly conclude... Um, as well as setting up specific programming, um, and even within this, we try to be as flexible as possible in how we support artists and react to their needs and inquiries um, for support. As well as being a, a centre for sculpture, which still implies a very physical and location-dependent existence, we've also started to talk about ourselves more as a, a support agency, which perhaps implies uh, more accurately the flexibility and fluidity of the, pro the approach we have to the work we do. Um, and we're very much an open door organisation committed to helping um, to equip the next generation of professional artists working with sculpture to develop their practice and ultimately have sustainable careers. Thank you very much.